I'm cutting all the rafters out. I've got one up there just to make sure I had everything the way, the way it needed to be. And I've got some more lined up through there. And I'll show you the way I cut these. It may not be the fastest way to do it, but it works for me. I'm using a, a template that has the, uh, the peak cut on it and the seat cut. And then from the seat cut to where it actually cuts off. I've made a lot of these templates like this, and I guess a lot of people have. I'm measuring eight foot four from the peak, or the sharp point of the, of the angle here, down eight foot four. And then I can put this mark right here. Actually, I have it on the top. I can line those two marks up, and I've got everything from there on automatically set. I can just make a pencil mark here and here and I can cut this off and cut my cut the seat cut out and it's ready to put on the wall up on top of the plate. I just line those marks up the one I made on top of the rafter with the one that's on top of the template and I can mark my seat cut out and I can mark the cutoff the actual cutoff down here. That way everything's pretty much uniform. Measuring my eight foot four. I'm gonna draw a line across that. So they can see it good. I just line up the line, the mark on top of the template with the mark on top of the rafter. Mark the seat cut and the cutoff. The tail. Finished cutting this with my silky. Take a chisel and just clean up anything that needs to be cleaned there. It's ready to put on the house.
glad those are up. I've got to have some water. It's been a very, very humid day today. But I've got the rafters up, <clears throat> thank the Lord. And I'll get some lathing to the board and start running that, getting ready for the metal. I had given myself an extra inch in the length of these so that I could fit at the peak. I like the way they fit up there. It's a little extra work, but the end results I think is worth it. Go a little bit extra, make things look sweet. It's a little more difficult to fit against a hewn surface, but they did okay. I've started running the lath, which is a two by four on top of the rafters. I'm setting these on a 24 inch center, starting from the bottom, putting them on with torque screws, getting quite a bit of wood up there. Sure was happy to have the rafters up. I'll set you up over here in the shade and you can watch me work. Or you could come give me a hand. This is always easier to do something like this when you have an extra hand where you're not having to climb up and down so much. We have somebody on the ground cut and hand it to you. But I'm doing both jobs today. I've got the lath on. I had to tear off a little bit of the edge of the shingles on the, the main part of the building so that I could get underneath there and screw my boards on up there at the top. When I was doing that, I found some of the old wood shingles, the sawn shingles, not the split shingles, but the ones that were cut on a, a shingle mill were on there. Which they're in pretty sad shape. They just broke off, just crumbled in my hands. I've left the, uh, the lath extra long out on the ends I'll trim that off when I get my metal and I'll be able to uh, pull up from the bottom and square the roof up so that the metal will work properly at the bottom. It won't be what we call sawtooth. It'll be even all the way across the bottom. And to do that, your roof needs to be square to make everything work out on the metal. It just looks much nicer when the sheets are even across the bottom and not one hanging down and up and down and up and down. That just doesn't look very clean at all. And I think I'm gonna make some little fascia boards, some little narrow pieces out of some of the oak that I had left. I've used quite a bit of oak and used some pine and a little bit of cedar, red cedar.